Hello folks out there, this is the Tractor Doctor again from South Carolina. Uh, today we're going to talk about ignition systems on uh, antique tractors. And the particular one we happen to be working on today is 8N Ford. Um, this is an area of gives a lot of people a lot of trouble uh, trying to figure out what's wrong with it, how to uh, fix it correct the problems and how to service it properly. Uh, start off with a few tools you're going to need uh, somewhat specialized. It's going to be a uh, spark plug gap gauge as a way to set the gap on the plugs. Here's the kind I prefer. It's a wire type gauge. It's a little thing on each end here to open up the gap with. Um, you got various different sizes on here. Uh, they also make those little ones like you see people carry on the key ring just tapered all the way around and it gradually gets bigger uh, I don't particularly like those I've found them not to be very accurate uh, also it's one of these little spark plugs looking things it comes with a little clip you can ground it out hook it to the engine hook your wire on here and then you can see the uh, spark jump out here on the end. You can use this to diagnose whether you have any spark or not at your spark plugs. Uh, you also need a set of filler gauges. Here's a set that I have. It's bent 45 degrees. Uh, they're actually designed for adjusting valves. Uh, most of the time those will work or you can get a set of straight ones. I've got a set here that are straight. They've also got the little wire gauges in there to uh, set your spark plugs with. And also, it's not mandatory, but uh, I got a set. Of, I keep a set of these little ignition wrenches. One end's 90 degrees, and then the other end's made like a standard open-end wrench, and you get a whole set of them. Uh, this set here happens to be Craftsman. I think they cost 30 bucks or something like that. It wasn't too terrible expensive. But these are real handy for getting down in the distributor, tightening up little nuts. Also, here's another handy little item I like to keep around. See the end of it. It's a spring-loaded screw starter. It's got a magnet on one end. Then the other end, this one's made for straight screws. Take a straight screw twist this thing like this spring loaded put it on there push it down and it'll lock the screw on the end of it and you can use it for putting your point screws in little screws to hold your points in and you won't drop the screws because sometimes you get big old hands like that guy it's hard to get down in there these things this in here happens to be a craftsman they're like six bucks down at Sears but you can get them from any other uh, good tool supplier and that's pretty much all you need in the way of tools other than your common tools like screwdrivers and uh, regular combination wrenches and things like that uh, we'll start out talk about some of the main components that you have in the ignition system be your spark plugs your points your condenser, distributor cap, the rotor button, and then of course you'll have your plug wires also. And then you've got your ignition coil. All right. um, first thing we'll talk about is just exactly how an ignition system works. Uh, when you switch the uh, ignition switch on, it sends 12 volt current to the positive side of the coil. The coil will be labeled positive and negative. You send 12 volt current to this side of the coil. That energizes the coil. All right, and then when you crank the engine over, the distributor rotates. And I've got this distributor taken apart. We've got the rest of the components off here. Distributor rotates. And there's a little cam right here. This is a four cylinder engine, so you got four lobes on the cam. Those lobes turn 
and then that operates to points. All right, when the points close, then that causes the coil to fire and it sends current current out the high voltage tower and through the coil wire into the distributor cap. Comes down through the center electrode here in the cap. And then here's your rotor. And this center part right here contacts right here. And that sends the current out to the end of it. And when the rotor's turning, when the, when the points close and energizes, the current comes through here, through the rotor, and it'll come right here and jump over to the tower, to the tower and go down the ignition wire to the spark plug. Then all this is in a time sequence. These points close at precisely the time that the engine is at top dead center on compression stroke or just before top dead center. Depending on what engine you're working on, the timing can be set anywhere from 4 degrees to 20 or 30 degrees. Just depends on how much RPMs it's running and what the manufacturers suggest. But ignition fires, spark plug fires um, a set number of degrees just before top dead center. And that's pretty much the rundown on how the ignition system operates. Um, first thing we're going to talk about is the points. And these here are real corroded. I don't know whether you can see it on the camera or not. But this is an area that generally gives people a lot of trouble. Uh, if you let your antique tractor set over the winter time, a lot of times these points will corrode up and you won't make contact and it will not crank. Uh, a lot of times what you can do um, is take a piece of sandpaper, emery cloth or something that's not too rough, uh, probably 200 and something grit, or you could use a fingernail file. Uh, they actually make a little small steel file that's made for doing uh, cleaning points and they call it an ignition file. So you just take a piece of sandpaper, double it over, slide it down between these points with them still in the distributor, work it back and forward like that, and you can clean the point contacts. And a lot of times, oh, that's all it takes to get one back running after it's been set. But these points do need to be replaced occasionally. The points and the condenser. Now the condenser is its purpose serves it hooks on stud here on the points. The purpose in the condenser is when the points open the condenser stores the electrical energy and keeps it from jumping the points and arcing. So if a lot of times if the condenser itself goes bad it will cause the points to arc and burn. All right. But when the points close the condenser releases its uh, electrical energy. Um, and the next thing we'll talk about is your distributor cap and your rotor. These two components are pretty straightforward. They usually uh, work good or they don't work. There's usually no in between. But what you want to check is for any kind of arcing or corrosion or anything around these terminals. Uh, and this one here is a used one, but it doesn't really look to be in that bad of shape. Now the cap in here has got some wear on it, it's arced, and the contact's not in that good of shape. And these items here need to be replaced periodically, um, and that's pretty well straightforward on the cap and rotor. Then you got your spark plugs. But you want to make sure to use the correct heat range that's recommended for your particular application. Um, I have had times in the past when you have one that be bad about filing plugs. A lot of times you could put a couple of heat ranges hotter plug in it and um, stop it from filing plugs. Um, you want to set the gap on the plugs to the manufacturer's recommended settings. Now on this particular application it's around 25 thousandths thick. And that's going to be this size wire right here. You want to 
stick it in there and then this one here it's a little bit wide take the little notch right here and pull it back pull the electrode back down a little bit and now that's just about right now I see a lot of folks take these wire gauges and just force them in there and open it up now, that's not the correct way to do it the correct way to do it is to open it up and pull it back with these little notched out hook on here then that way it keeps from damaging the end of your uh, electrode here and that's pretty much all the basics on it and this is part one I want to be sure to watch part two I'm gonna do a video another video that shows the points in the distributor and the ignition system put back together and we'll talk more about it in greater detail in the next video.